Well, I certainly have lost many battles. Uh, so far, I've not lost a war, but I've certainly lost many battles. Oh, yeah, more than I can count, probably. Um, I, I don't really like risk for risk's sake or, or anything. It's and I, and I do think that um, a lot of things are are very risky uh, with a low chance of success. But if you want to try to come up with an innovative breakthrough, um, that's kind of that's going to be how it is. Um, Anything which is significantly innovative is going to come with a significant risk of failure. Um, and um, but you know, if you, you've got to take big chances in order for the potential for a big positive outcome. Um, and um, you know, just if, and if, if I mean, if, if the outcome is exciting enough, then then taking a big risk is worthwhile. Yeah. Yeah. It's really how I approach it. But but then. Once executing down a path, I actually do my absolute best to reduce uh, risk, you know, because, or, or to improve the, pro another way of saying it, to improve the probability of success, because uh, when you try to do something that is very, um, very risky, uh, you, ha you, you, you have to spend a lot of effort trying to reduce that risk as you embark down that path. I mean, when, um, when I started SpaceX, the, I thought the odds of success were very low. Um, I thought we'd most likely fail, um, but I thought, well, we should give it a try nonetheless. It, it, it certainly, it, there are times when you know, things don't go well, and then uh, that's quite dispiriting, for sure. Um, and so then it's, it's difficult to proceed with the same level of enthusiasm. Um, but um, but I do think, like, I do think the things that we're doing are, are you know, pretty important to the future. Um, and if we don't succeed, then you know there's well, there's, there's not it's not clear what other things would succeed. Um, and if, if we don't succeed, then we will be suddenly pointed to as a reason why people shouldn't even try for these things. So uh, I think it's important that we do whatever is necessary to keep going. I think uh, successful entrepreneurs probably come in all sizes, shapes, and flavors. Um, I'm not sure there's any one one particular thing. Um, uh, for me, you know, some of the things I've described already, are, I think, are very important. I think, uh, really, uh, an, an obsessive uh, nature with respect to the quality of the product um, it is very important. Uh, yeah, so, you know, being obsessive compulsive is, is a good thing in this context. Um, uh, really, really liking what you do, what, whatever area that you get into. Um, given that, you know, even if you, if you're the best, the best. There's always a chance of failure. So I think it's important that you really like whatever you're doing. Um, if, if you don't like it, life is too short. Um, you know, I, I'd say, if, if, and, and also if, if you if you like what you're doing, you think about it even when you're not working. I mean, you, it'll just it, it's it's something that your mind is drawn to. Um, and and if you don't like it, you just really can't make it work. I think. Um, well, I think it's important to um, have a, a very, um, to, to apply critical thinking to, this may sound trite, but to apply critical critical thinking to what, what one is doing. Um, and um, by, by that I mean just um, the fundamentals of logic, you know, of um, do you have the right axioms, um, are they relevant, and are you making the right conclusions based on those, on those axioms. That, that's the essence of critical thinking, and yet it is amazing how often people fail to do that. Um, w I think wishful thinking is uh, innate uh, in the human brain. Um, you, you, you want things to be the way you, you, you wish them to be, and so you tend to filter uh, information that you shouldn't filter. Um, that's the most common flaw that I see. If, if you want to do something really innovative, you have to apply a sort of first principles analysis not, not, and don't, don't reason by analogy. Analogies are, are referencing the past. Um, it, it, so you, first principles means you, you, you look at the most fundamental truths in, in a particular arena, uh, um, and, and the things that really are almost indisputably correct, um, and you reason up from there to a conclusion. Um, and and if, you, if you see that that conclusion is at, is at odds with with what people generally believe, then you have an opportunity. Mm.
Um, okay. Now, you can't operate like that on all things because it takes too much mental horsepower. So most of your life you have to operate by reasoning by analogy. But if you really want to innovate, you must reason from first principles to identify the problem. The reason I uh, came out to Stanford was actually to work on uh, energy storage technologies for electric cars. That, that summer of 95, um, I was looking at the, the, the internet and it seemed to me like the internet was going to have a big effect on humanity. So I, I, I thought, well, I can either work on electric vehicle technology for, and do my PhD at Stanford um, and watch the internet get built or I could put my studies on hold and try to be part of the internet. And at first I tried to get a job at Netscape because that was the only internet company. Uh -huh. um, and they didn't respond to me. So then I was like, okay, um, if I can't get a job at the only internet company, then I better try starting something. Um, but I talked to my professor and I said, look, I'm gonna try starting a company. It's probably not gonna succeed. Uh, and if it doesn't succeed, can I come back? And he said, sure, no problem. Um, and so I put my studies on hold and uh, started the company. I mean, we had many, uh, at Tesla we came many times close to bankruptcy. Um, in fact, in, at the end of 2008, we were only a few days from bankruptcy. It was literally two days, or three days maybe. <laughs>